and amigos, and welcome to Keyframers. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, Dave Korshid, also known as at David K. Piano. Right now, we're giving a quick overview of some techniques used to build this animation. Uh, our show is supported by our sponsors, CodePen at CodePen.io, CSS Tricks at CSS-Tricks.com, and viewers like you. You can pledge at Patreon.com slash Keyframers. Uh, links are available below, so check it out. Mm -hmm. And hey, you could also watch the full process of creating this animation from scratch with a deeper dive into each technique. So check out the live stream. And if you have any questions, leave a comment or ask in the chat, and we're going to be happy to answer. We're using something called the flip technique over here in order to get that uh, that layout transition from the bottom left to the the right. I'm just going to say the top right, but it's the entire right corner. And we're using the flip technique, which was coined by Paul Lewis. Um, you could look at arrowtwist.com if you want an early article on uh, just the beginnings of the flip technique. We'll have a link there for you soon. Um, but flip stands for first, that's the F, last invert play. So essentially what we're doing in the JavaScript is we're taking the first element, which is this first L over here, grabbing what the first rect is. And this get rect is just a function that calls get bounding clients rect on that first element. And so we're capturing the first rectangle. Then we're doing something. And so you could just consider this sort of a callback where you do whatever, uh, whatever happens that changes the layout and potentially causes that first element to change position or for another element to, I guess, appear or do something. Um, so then we grab that last element, which is that get last L over here. By default, we're just returning the first element. This is assuming that, um, that we don't have two different elements. We're just changing the position of the first element. And we calculate the delta between the last rectangle and the first rectangle. So this dx represents how far it traveled on the x-axis. dy is how far it traveled on the y-axis. dw is the proportion from the last width to the first width, and dh is the proportion of the last heights to the first heights. Basically, we're trying to track did it grow, how much did it grow by? And we're also going to track how much did the position moved by. Uh, we're also going to set a data flipping attribute. So I'll put that in here. This is data flipping equals, it's going to be the string true. And we're doing that because um, since we're setting the CSS variables, dx, dy, dw, dh, directly on the element, we want it to immediately appear both in the second position, the last position, and pretending that it was in the first position. And we do that in the CSS, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but after one animation frame, after it immediately transitions basically nowhere, it's an illusion, uh, we want to get rid of that data flipping attribute so that we could use CSS and transition smoothly from, um, from whatever it's inverted to, to zero. And this will make a little bit more sense. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say set timeout. And we're going to do this in a set timeout instead, just so that you could see what's going on. So I'm going to copy this here. And we'll do this after a second. And let's see what happens. So when you click, all right. So when you click, it's, um, it's not moving anywhere because it's inverting itself to the original position. And I guess it's not too clear over here, but um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's, this is our, our CSS. Uh, when, whenever this data flipping attribute is applied, we use those CSS variables uh, to, to make it look like it's in the first state. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we, we've, got, we've got these split up into independent transforms, uh, which makes it look a little more complex than it, than it is, uh, but we'll break that down in another. In another. Uh, but for instance, uh, we've got the transform translate x here. If I comment out all of this other stuff, you can see exactly how that applies. So we're just transitioning the x. Um, so it's it's pretending that it's in um, in its former position using that uh, x value, um, and then we're also doing a translate y using that dy value to get it to 
up and down into the proper position. And then uh, our separate BG element also has some of those uh, variables applied uh, for the translate X, but then using those proportional uh, variables that, that David talked about um, to scale it to the, to the right size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, there is honestly a lot to talk about here. Um, I encourage you to look at one of our past videos where we go into this in a little bit more depth. In fact, I could find the link for that. Yes, uh, so the flip transition with CSS variables and border radius, we've got that linked uh, down in the description. You should definitely check that one out. Um, we, we go into a lot of detail about flip um, throughout a lot of our episodes, but this one is a good one where we're using this, this technique um, with CSS variables. So uh, if you want to learn more, check out that that other video uh for the for this one uh and then uh watch the full the full live stream we've got uh, a, a more complete breakdown of